Welcome back guys to Pokemon TCG HQ, Alex here once again, uh, this is round 4 now of the Athena, Ge Athena, Games? Athena Games League Cup that took place in Norwich, um, so round 4 we have Tubbs Warner playing God of War GX um, against Bradley Bartlett playing Drampa Garbador, uh, so without further ado we'll just jump straight into the game, cheers. Okay, so we do have Tubbs on the left and Bradley on the right hand side. Um, so quite an interesting matchup. Uh, it really does come down to what kind of uh, build Bradley is playing. Uh, Gardevoir has fr tended to have had good matchups against Garbodor um, because it has the options to play stuff like its GX attack, Twilight GX, where it's able to put any 10 cards from a discard pile back into his deck. Um, <laughs> uh, so these players are sort of ready to go. I guess it's uh, we were actually handing out a prize. They were actually handing out the prizes and congratulating the senior and junior results um, as this round is about to head. So there's the dice roll. Uh, it's a four. I'm not too sure that what that means. Who's starting? Uh, both players are now drawing their seven cards. It looks like a mulligan from Tubbs there. Uh, so Brandon does have a basic. Does have a Garbodor in hand, looks like a hand, Flowstone, cuts Tubbs' deck. Um, so yeah, it'll be interesting whether uh, he has all those Potowns, um, gets them into play at the right times, um, uh, is able to right Sedge the right DCEs, and actually be able to take and deal 180 damage with Drampa um, pretty quickly. And if he's able to force Tubbs to play a lot of items, um, have that Garbodor to sweep um, as an attacker as well. Uh, so there's the third mulligan there from Tubbs. Um, this time he is able to draw routes. Uh, so we are going to get this game underway. There's three mulligans that he's going to be drawing there. Um, and he starts a lone trubbish though. And he's starting as well. So it is pretty ideal having a massive hand in his um, in his opening hand as it were. Uh, plays down Drampa. Uh, also plays down Tapulele for a Bridget. Uh He grabs an Eevee. Uh, Trubbish and the Tapu Fini, which is an interesting tech, um, really useful um, because he's likely then to be playing Rainbow Energies. Um, and if Tubbs ever gets a, into a position where he's sort of overloading on a Gardevoir, he can use uh, Tapu Fini's uh, Tapu Storm GX attack and shuffle away that giant Gardevoir back into Tubbs's deck. Um, as long as Tubbs has a bench Pokemon, of course. Um, there's the Rainbow Energy attachment to the Drampa. Uh, getting it ready to start uh, using Berserk nice and early. Um, but with such a large hand, is there much else he can do? I mean, he's already played a Bridget. Um, no, so he just passes Tubbs top decks the routes. Oh, there's a bit of an awkward Sycamore there. There's a couple of uh, Guzmas gone. But he does get essentially essentially a Bridget hand. Uh, a Bridget board, as it were, with two routes and the Eevee. Uh, with a Fairy Energy to be able to play... Um, or use the energy evolution ability um, and evolve straight into the Sylveon. Um, he can't retreat though, uh, so here this is where uh, Bradley's going to try and capitalize. Has the Floatstone on the Trubbish um, and the and the Choice Band does have uh, all all the right required energies on his uh, on his Drampa as well. So he's already currently hitting for 80 damage on a basic non GX um, or EX Pokemon, 110. Uh, if it is an EX or GX, uh, he does play an N. Also has the Garbotoxin Garbodor up nice and early, uh, stopping any Tapu Lele plays, um, any Secret Springs from um, Tubbs' Gardevoirs should he get them up. Uh, so Tubbs will be looking for a Field Blur as soon as possible. Um, but with the option of actually having a Magical Ribbon attack uh, off next turn, it's likely that he's going to be able to get... Um, a field blow whenever he wants so this is not going to be sort of taken down by um, a drampa anytime soon uh, we haven't seen a po town yet and uh, to really start racking up that damage on um tubs the side of the board uh, we have seen a magical ribbon i couldn't see what cards necessarily he has taken uh bradley has evolved that espion ex or gx sorry uh, into well sort of eevee into the espion gx and has played a guzma he's deciding to knock out or bring up um, the routes with 
the energy attached to it and uses Berserk again, takes a second prize going into a, a two prize lead. Uh, Tubbs has got his first God of War up now, has the DCE um, on the Sylvian and does actually just use his Fairy Wind for 110 damage. So he's applying that pressure um, even without the God of War. And then we see Bradley attaches uh, the Rainbow Energy to the Espeon. Sort of allowing it now to Berserk for 180 damage on... Oh no, he hasn't decided to the Berserk. He decided to Righteous Edge. And there's the Ace of Roller play there by Tubbs. And just with that one Fairy Energy attachment, without even using Secret Spring, he's able to knock out that Drampo because he put that the Drampo on 120 damage. Um, so really, really good plays here by Tubbs Edge. Actually dropping his cards. Um... But I guess I guess the the actual atta attack was actually quite irrelevant. That that Rider's Edge was actually the better attack in the end because Tubbs used Ace Roller to um, to actually room to um, attack with the, um, the the Ace Roller to pick up the damaged Sylvian. I should say I really should be able to speak here. Um, if you guys haven't noticed this this this, this game and round four round three. We're actually much quicker than previously. Um, I've actually sped up the games a little bit more just to try and save a bit of time as I'm sort of struggling for time here. I'm currently doing this at 2 a.m. Um, we have seen just a very energy attachment with a choice ban and attack onto that Espeon. Uh, so dealing 180 damage. Um, 190 damage is currently on. Um, we have seen a field blower there by Bradley. He doesn't have too much else in hand. He does have to play that Sycamore. Doesn't have the bench space for another Drampa, unfortunately. Uh, it does have the Trubbish Raid. There's the Poe Town. Could be a bit too late, but it's still an option to be able to do sort of quite a number of things currently. Um, I think last turn also Bradley decided to divide GX, um, taking the knockout on the Eevee that was on the bench. So now he has Psychic. He used Psychic, put that God of War on 160 damage, uh, leaving it with 70 remaining. And as long as Tubbs has played a few items. Um, there's not much you can do. So there, Tubbs does take the KO on the Espeon. Um, does have a Floatstone Retreat. It does have the DCE there. He's dealing 80 damage to so that. Tapu Lele is knocking out that Garbador. But he has decided to go for the with the Garbador. Um, purely because it's a one prize attacker as well. Since Tubbs is currently actually now ahead on prizes. Uh, plays a Hala. Uh, allows him to shuffle and draw 7 cards again. And takes the knockout with Trash and Lanch. Um, Tubbs here <laughs> finally taking sort of a two damage on the artillery. And it looks like Bradley is taking game one. Um, <laughs> some A couple of awkward prizes there for Tubbs, but uh, not to worry. So there you go. This is um, how Drampa can start applying a lot of pressure and actually win this matchup. Uh, Tubbs wasn't able to get too much going and with that early Garbotoxin uh, really slow down uh, Tubbs' side of the board. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how Tubbs goes about this um, when going first. Of course he'll have that option to project turn 1, uh, potentially maybe get a Guard of Wine to play turn 2, maybe 2. Um, normally it's a bit of a stretch but a lot of times he can try to get a... Um, <laughs> Curly owned to play as well, and you can see the both players signing there. Uh, so I guess I have to announce it now. Um, both these players were 3 0 at this point, um, going into round four. Um, the head judge had decided to or decided to actually pick this game for the stream game, but both players were going to ID anyway. Uh, so they're just playing out for stream. Uh, probably another reason why I've sort of sped up the game or tried to anyway. Um, but it's an interesting game anyway. We get to see it being played out, uh, which is pretty cool by these guys. Um, so there's the Tapu Lele from Tubbs on turn one. Grabs that full art project that he has in his deck. Quickly goes through his deck to see what's been prized, what's available to him. Um, most likely a double route and an Eevee once again. Oh, Unless he has an Eevee piece in his hand or he sees that one's prized. So there he's gone for the Octillery play. Um... There's the parallel city, nice and early. DC to the active uh, routes. So here, Bradley's current situation is that he could energy evolution that Eevee. Um, but a confusion wouldn't be able to 
uh, or Confuse Ray, I'm not too sure what it is, it's something to do with confusion, um, to knock out that routes, which would be un unfortunate, so he would need the DCE, but there's the Dramper, he could, if that's a Floatstone, he could attach the Dramper, retreat and use Righteous Edge, sort of just discarding that DCE, um, essentially just sort of trying to get rid of those important resources that Tubbs has had to use, and that does look like the play. Uh, there's a sycamore for a fresh set of seven with a high five. So we've had to we've been able to borrow from our um, nearby neighbours in France. I believe it was when we a few of us had seen that those guys are doing. We brought it back to the UK with us. Um, looks like an ultra ball there from Tubbs grabbing that auxiliary and does a pistol hand for free. Does have another ultra ball. I'm not too sure he hit the rare candy though because he does have a guard of iron hand, which is a bit unfortunate for him. Um, likely to grab a curlier here, start evolving some of his routes. Oh, there's a Potan. Not much he could do about that, unfortunately. There's a Ray Candy. Doesn't hit another God of Odo. So what would Tubbs try to do here? So this is where Tubbs will start to go behind in the prizes once again. And Bradley has that DC, so he can start using Berserk. He has the Garbodor. Uh, which means he can start setting himself up to attack for 180 damage now with that choice band. And the rainbow energy. So he had all the outs there. Um, he will be looking for a couple more Trubbish. And there's the other one. Um, just so he can either get that ready in case he needs to um, evolve into a trash launch. Or if it gets um, potentially plea GX. And then he's had to evolve another Trubbish. Uh, there's a Sycamore from Tubbs. Um, after a field blower, just so he can use the ability. Oh, now he has access to abilities again, I should say. There's another Curlier. There's a Guard of Evolution with a Choice Band. The Abyssal Hand for free, no extra energy, unfortunately, though. Um, so he has just had to use Twilight GX, put those items back in his discard, uh, from his discard into his deck. Uh, lots of lots of supporters that are really useful as well, like the Ace of Rollers. Maybe some important energies like DCEs as well. Um, so going for the conservative play there. Um, so this is where Bradley will be looking to do that big berserk attack for 180, 150, 80 damage because that choice one is still like still there. The, he attaches the rainbow to the Eevee of course. So if he's able to get that uh, SP on GX, he can potentially divide GX later if Tubbs doesn't isn't able to draw into the Ace of Rollers. Um, He'd be looking also for for some tool just to attach to that Garbodor, um, really prevent any of those EV evolutions occurring on the bench um, as well, um, and those Secret Springs which Tubbs currently now has access to. Uh, but he does just Berserk, puts that Garbodor onto, it looks like 100 and, no, 210 damage, there's only 20 HP left, and Tubbs plays the end. Ends him to fresh new cards of six and Bradley to five. Let's have a look at what Tubbs can do. Doesn't look like he has too much energy, but he does have an ultra ball to fin down his hand, um, so he can get that a galade out. Uh, can now galade uh, premonition for the top five cards and then artillery for the cards that he requires. So likely to put that energy in in the top three. Uh, potentially the field blower, but I guess he might be worried about wasting it. There's Octillery for the Field Blower Energy and another card. And there's the KO actually. Um, just by having that energy, that's what he was after. Um, if if he's able to, have, if Bradley's able to evolve into the Espeon uh, GX here, he does Energy Evolution, does find it. Obviously now he's unable to uh, divide GX to take multiple prizes, but he looks like he has another supporter in hand as well. So ideally here, he was looking for that. He would have that DC and SP on DX in hand, but of course, can't always have everything. <laughs> he does N, just to try and slow down Tubbs. Of course, without that tool on that Garbodor, Toxin Garbodor, Tubbs has that out with uh, Octillery. There's some poor shuffling there by Tubbs, throwing his cards about. Must have had a good hand. There's the DC in multiple... Um, Ultra pulls the scenes and the field blower. He has everything going, but even though Bradley did find a choice man to attach to the Garbodor and Garbodor, 
Um, and there's a KO with just a confused variable confusion. Psybeam. I could be completely wrong. <laughs> um, I really should learn more about more about my Pokemon cards as well. Uh, so it did. F it didn't feel blur. The top just Ultra Ball way is feel blur. I'm highly confused. <laughs> he could have filled blood that Garbatoxin. Chose not to. But maybe it's okay. He has that DC on that Tapu Lele and the Choice Band. He's hitting for 80, 110 damage, so he's two hit KOing this SP on GX. Um, and Bradley would actually need to commit another energy here, wasting an energy attachment to actually be able to attack into that Tapu Lele. So there's a Guzma. So I'm guessing Bradley, I'm not too sure he has a Flowstone in his hand. Uh, it does have the Garbodor uh, with the Trash Ranch and attaches a Psychic Energy and knocks it out. Uh, putting him down to two prizes and preserving his SP on GX on the bench as well. So here Tubbs is, hasn't got any Gardevoirs out. <laughs> Uh, since that one got, got knocked out, so he's just going with Tapu Lele. He does Guzma up that SP on GX and takes the knockout with Tapu Lele here. Um, so, which is interesting to see what Bradley does. So, it looks like Tubbs is still going to need to take out um, multiple uh, GX Pokemon. I say multiple now, Bradley's actually just benched a Tapu, Tapu Lele GX. Um, going for that Sycamore with the Wonder Tag after Phil blowing his own Choice Band off that Garbo Toxin, Garbador, and the Choice Band on that Tapu Lele. So, we're getting more items in uh, Tubbs' board as well. So, seven, hoping he's hit a Floatstone so that he can continue to uh, apply that ability lock. Yes, he does. Does find a Rainbow Energy as well. Looks like he's just trashed the Lantern for eight. Items. <laughs> There's the parallel. Um, be interested to see what Tubbs can do here. Does play the end and himself ending himself down to two and Bradley down to two. But with no energy in hand, he's gonna have to try and end himself to two here. Um, and one of them maybe being a DC so he can retreat that tabula lane, maybe knock out that garbage. Um doesn't look like he's hit it at all. Does, however, however, looks like an ace roller, so he retreats with the psychic energy and passes with the Sylveon active. Um, Bradley does have the Sycamore. Does have the Potan once again and another Garbatoxin, not Garbatoxin, a Trash Lash Garbador, um, ready to be attacking with. Attaches the rainbow to the Tapu Lele, putting on 160. And he just deals 160 damage once again with the Trash Lunch. And Tubbs has just top decked the Fairy Energy. Plays Acer Roller onto that Acer Ro onto that damaged Sylveon. Evolves and has the Fairy Energy. Plays Magical Ribbon. From any free card, so if Bradley has it once again, has a Guzma in hand, um, he wins game two and actually takes the set. Um, Tubbs not drawing as well, uh, maybe not as well as he has in his last three rounds, and he does have the Guzma for the win, just re re retreats into the other Garbador, trashes ants for the KO, and there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Um, <laughs> an interesting, fun game. Uh, as I said, both players had ID'd already. Uh, they're both just going to ID their fourth and their fifth rounds for a 3-0-2 um, record and securing themselves into top eight. Um, but yeah, hopefully we'll get a winning in game in the final round. Uh, something a bit more. I wouldn't. I was going to say interesting, but it's not necessarily in, more interesting, but maybe more on the line, as it were. Um, hope you guys enjoyed that. Bit more of a shorter, fun game and. The next round and final round of Swiss will be up uh, online with you guys soon. Thank you very much. Hope you guys enjoyed. Peace.